What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash fat people stories. Okay, so today we are reading one story, and just recently I said, Oh guys, this is the longest story I've ever read on this channel in a single video. Well, we're about to beat that with this story because it's even longer, and it's called Cousin Carney Part 7, Air Conditioning Woes. I know I promised some more amusing Cousin Carney stories, and apologize that I haven't posted in a while. I figure I have at least seven more stories, but not all of them are about her being fat and lazy. Some of them are about her being really stupid. I figured maybe I should just jump ahead to the ones most related to this sub. Hope you find this one amusing. This is long, so there is a Teal Deer summary at the bottom if you want to miss out on all the crazy twists and turns and get to the end of the story right away. One year, a few years back, my air conditioning crew wrapped out and it happened to be the week of 4th of July, which somehow played a part in a delay in getting it repaired. While waiting on parts, I had to live without AC for over a week and it wasn't fun, but I was raised without AC so maybe I can handle heat better than others. And I can generally be rather stoic so got through it with minimal complaining. Mostly we got through it drinking a lot of frozen water, using plenty of fans and ice packs, and going to the movie theater on the weekend to freeze our butts off so we didn't mind the heat so much when I left because I needed to thaw out. <laughs> That was during the time that Carney would still sometimes come over for movie nights. Because I remember her calling about coming over and I said, Well, just so you know, my air conditioning isn't working. And she quickly said, Okay, maybe another time then. She was not having anything to do with a warm house. That's fine, I didn't blame her. But I couldn't help but notice that Carney had zero sympathy for my situation. It's not that I expected a lot of, Oh, poor yous. Or invites to her house to cool off. I'm only highlighting what we already know. Carney only cares about Carney and no one else, but that's fine. On the other side of town, she lived in a small two-bedroom apartment at the time. The kitchen and living room were about the same size. The kitchen had the usual appliances and cupboards and room enough for a kitchen table against the far wall. But instead, that's where their dog crates were. The living room was big enough for one sofa, a TV stand, with a TV on it and a bookshelf filled with DVDs. The bedrooms were also small. One of the bedrooms was just their junk and storage room and they just kept that room closed. They had a window air conditioning unit in the kitchen window, another in the living room window, and one in their bedroom window. That seems like it should be adequate for such a small apartment. The summer following my own air conditioning woes, I got a call from her upset because their bedroom AC had stopped working. I gave her sympathy because that's what she wanted, but also, I did feel bad for her. It's never fun trying to sleep without air conditioning in the hot months. Yet, for someone who had zero sympathy for my situation, she sure wanted mounds of sympathy when it happened to her. Of course, she felt like she and her husband had enough health conditions that it was a much more dire situation than mine had been. I suppose there is something about being obese that can make you less able to tolerate hot weather, or at least they like to think so. One time their power was out all afternoon in the summertime, and to hear her tell it, you might think there was some kind of human rights violation against people with health problems for the power company to allow the power to be out. Neither one was on any kind of life-saving machines or anything like that. But at least unlike when my central AC unit went out, and unlike the time the power was out, they still had other rooms in their house with AC, but that wasn't good enough for her. This might be a personal failing, but I tend to be a solutions-oriented person, so when someone calls to tell me their woes, I immediately want to brainstorm solutions to help them. Stop for a moment and think about if you were in this situation. It's hot, your bedroom window AC stopped working, and it's the middle of summer in a warm climate. You don't have a lot of money. What kind of solutions would you consider? What 
what would you do? I don't care what your answer is, but whatever answer you just came up with, I guarantee you, Carney would not have chosen that solution. If the solution makes any kind of sense, it's not a Cousin Carney solution. Is the landlord gonna come take a look? No, because we own the AC. He's not gonna come look at it. Oh, and Harry doesn't know how to work on them? Maybe YouTube has some videos of AC unit repairs. Harry worked at an auto shop working on cars, so maybe he was good at tinkering and fixing things. It could be worth a try at least. No, they make these units to just be disposable and replace them. You can't fix them. I'm a little skeptical of that, but I don't know much about the topic or how old the unit was, so I wasn't gonna argue. However, this brought up a new thought. This is Carney and Harry, so it's a safe bet that they've done exactly zero preventative maintenance on their AC units or weatherproof them during the winter months, which could be a clue to why it had stopped working. Still, by this time, I mostly don't care enough to lecture her anymore. And anyway, it's too late to go there. That's too bad. Maybe you can sleep in the living room a few days? There isn't enough room for us both to sleep in the living room. We only have the one sofa. Oh, yeah. Well, you could put the living room units into the bedroom, so you can at least be cool while you sleep. No, the living room AC isn't very powerful, and we'd still be hot. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know either. Even if... If there was nothing wrong with the living room AC, let's face it, neither one of them would be interested in doing the manual labor of moving it to another window anyway. Which made me wonder, when they found a new bedroom unit, who would install it? <laughs> well, never mind. I got the impression that she was fishing for an invitation to come hang out at my house because my AC was working. But by this time, I didn't want her in my house anymore. In any way, I didn't have time to entertain her. She can go to the library if she needs to cool off. I told her I felt really bad for them, and I do some looking around to find out who had the cheapest window AC units in the area. And if I heard of a sale or saw one used on a resale page or at a thrift store, I'd let her know. I got off the phone. When I got back to her a couple of days later, I found a sale flyer with some units on sale to tell her about. She didn't care anymore. They'd already replaced it. I said great. Great. I was happy for them. I thought all's well that ends well. But of course, that's not the end of this story. It's a carny story. They never resolve so easily. There is always several extra layers of bat guano crazy yet to come. Buckle up. About a month later, she calls me up on a Friday afternoon. Upset again. The AC unit they just got for the bedroom wasn't working. And whatever would they do? I said. What the How could a brand new unit just die about a month after you get it? It must still be under some kind of warranty, right? They were gonna take it back, right? She said her husband had called them and they would come out and replace it on Monday. But tragedy of tragedies, they couldn't come out before then. A place that comes out and installs the unit for you? Hey, I guess that's convenient for these two. Apparently she didn't get it from Walmart. She kept whining obnoxiously, certain they would literally die of having to wait for AC until Monday. So, still brainstorming, I asked if Harry could take out the unit and take it back to the store himself to trade it out. Yeah, it would mean he'd have to do all the work, which he's allergic to, and I know he doesn't really want to, but it can't be that difficult, can it? If they really couldn't live without it for three nights, wouldn't it be worth it? Her answer was that no, it doesn't work that way, or whatever. So, still trying to make some actual sense out of this whole crazy story, I thought it had something to do with voiding a warranty. I left it at that. So now I focused on showing empathy and reminding her of my misery without AC for a week the year before. She got impatient, not wanting to hear me complain about my problems because she only cared to talk about her own crisis. Still, I tried to give her tips on how to survive the weekend without AC, 
agree, but she wouldn't listen. Again, because of their conditions. Nothing I could suggest would pertain to them. It was different for them. For the record, it was not going to be in the 100s that weekend or anything like that. We don't have a super amount of humidity here either. Look, I am not saying they didn't have some health conditions. They both probably likely did due to their weight and poor diet if from nothing else, but they were also huge babies and hypochondriacs, so it's difficult to know where their actual health issues end and the lies and exaggerations begin. I'll probably tell you more about that in a future chapter, but for now, not being a medical professional and not having access to their medical files, I cannot be certain what, if any, conditions they had that would have meant sudden death without AC for the weekend, but I have some doubts. My daughter's bedroom was empty as she was mostly living elsewhere by now, but there is no way in hell I'd have offered it to Carney and Harry. She didn't like them and would have come home and murdered me in my sleep if she'd known they'd been in her room. So no, don't worry, I wasn't going to violate house rule number one and invite Carney to stay the weekend. Actually though, Carney didn't even ask or fish for an invitation. She had her own plan. She had worked out a deal with her boss at the crappy hotel she worked at where she got only one shift a week. They would stay there for $25 a night or $75 for the weekend. I couldn't resist asking because they were chronically broke. Uh, can you afford that? I mean, no, I don't have $75, but they said they'll just take it out of my check. Oh, uh, can you afford that? What choice do I have? We can't sleep without air conditioning. What can we do? I know it's miserable, but- But we have medical conditions. Harry has a bad heart, you know. Washing my hands of it. Oh, okay then. I don't know what to say here. Other than this is classic Carney. She doesn't give a damn about long-term consequences until they hit, yet reserves the right to act persecuted whenever having to deal with said consequences. Every decision she or Harry would make, they would choose whatever was going to be the easiest out or most instantly gratifying, regardless of what is in their best interest long-term. These two were never going to be capable of making mature, reasonable decisions. It's like they never matured past age 12. I left it at that and thought that was the end of the story. Oh, no, no, no. It continues to get better. Midweek the next week, she called to give me the update. She still wasn't happy. When they brought the replacement AC, it was a portable, not a window AC. It's not very good. Wait, what the flippity doodah is going on here? What company replaces your defective brand new window unit with a totally different kind of AC unit. What part of the story did you skip over here? We got it from our AC. What the hell is that? Rent-a-center? Holy crap. You're buying your window AC unit from a rent-to-own place? Yeah, so? Why would you do that? You're gonna pay three times as much as a brand new unit for something that is probably already used when you get it. And now you you tell me that if the used one they sell you doesn't work, they can replace it with whatever they have in stock even if it's not the same thing? And you're okay with that? What a shady company! Well, we didn't have the money for a new unit from Walmart. We had to have something. We can't sleep without air conditioning. To this day, I still don't know the full story here. I sort of suspect that the first window AC they bought from Rent-A-Center got repossessed maybe? And that possibly the wait until Monday deal had something to do with waiting until they had the money to go pay it up or start a new contract and then had to take whatever else they had in stock that day? That's my best guess anyway. Maybe you have a better guess. I've never dealt with these companies so I have no idea. But then even though they were struggling to pay their rent center bill, they blew $75 on a motel for the weekend? Oh sure, this all sounds totally legit. Who does this? I don't mean to mock them for being so broke, and I understand sometimes poor people have limited options. It's just these choices just seem so bizarre. Limited options, I understand. Making the stupidest possible decisions every time 
is where they lose me. But it's not even the craziest part. Here is the twist ending I could not believe. Months go by, maybe even a year. She calls me one day to gossip and complain about some of her neighbors moving out of the apartment building. It was a small building with only about six or eight units. She'd apparently been talking to Mrs. Slumlord about it. While she's rambling on, I'm not sure why she's telling me all this because I don't care, and I'm only half listening when I hear something of interest. He left because he was going to be evicted, but can you believe this? He even stole the air conditioners! What a dickwad! But I'm glad he's gone. I didn't like him. He had too many weird friends over. I hope- Wait, back up a second. Who did he steal air conditioners from? From the apartment! They belong to the landlord! This jackass took them when he moved out! What a terrible way to treat the landlord! He left owing rent and stole from them too! These people are all so trashy! I hate thieves! So anyway... No, wait. Let's revisit this thing about the window AC units from the landlord. How does this neighbor rate that the landlord provides him with AC, but you had to buy your own last summer and go through all that drama? Did this neighbor pay more rent every month for the AC units or something? What? What are you talking about? How did his apartment come with AC units, but yours didn't? Oh, well, ours did come with AC units too. The ones we have in the living room and kitchen belong to the landlord, but in the bedroom, we needed the more powerful unit. So when we moved in, we took out the one from the bedroom out the window and just put it in the junk room and brought our own from the last place we lived for the bedroom. That's why the landlord wouldn't fix the unit. So wait a minute. You're telling me that during that whole summer drama of AC units dying and having to be replaced and you had to go stay in a hotel that whole time, you had a working window AC unit just sitting on the floor of your spare bedroom and you didn't think to use it even temporarily? Well, it isn't very powerful. In mom mode again. Is it better than nothing, Carney? Is it better than spending $75 you didn't have to stay in a hotel? It wasn't even worth it to put it in the window just to have to take it out a couple of days later. Duh! Carney, you astound me. She went through the shady rent-to-own places and stayed in a hotel because she felt the window unit wasn't powerful enough to cool off a small bedroom barely big enough to fit their queen-sized bed and two nightstands? In what world does this make sense? I know that obese people often are hotter all the time than the rest of us, but does it make you stupid too? The idea that they had to have some heavy duty AC unit to keep a small bedroom cool seems to be pure insanity. Every time, every damn time I got sucked into some drama with Carney, ridiculous crap would come out of her mouth and by the time we got to the end of the story, I'd be ripping my hair out trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with her. Still, I admit, there may still be more to this story that I don't fully understand. I don't know how good or bad those window units from the landlord were. I don't know much about window AC units. I don't know what the whole deal with the Rena Center contract was about. Maybe I'm just really uncharitable. I told her, you know what? Don't ever complain to me about your air conditioner woes again, okay? Not when you have a spare unit in your spare room that you don't even want to use. I was now entering the I don't give a crap phase of the relationship. Wow, that was a story. Um, Cousin Carney, I'm starting to understand. Uh, so she takes the path of least resistance, even though there's plenty more resistance down the line, but, that she, but she just doesn't give a crap about it. Man, she needs some like, I don't know, like a freaking just put her on boot camp, man. Just That'll shape her up, right? That's how it works. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.